Good day, everyone. Welcome to our English communication class. This is your teacher, Johnny. Today, our lesson is all about verb and auxiliary verb. So, if you will remember, we already um, discussed this before, but uh, in view of our listeners and viewers, they wanted me to give more emphasis regarding the verb and auxiliary verb. Now, we will going to discuss this again. What do you think is the uh, meaning of verb again? As what we discussed before, the meaning of verb is a word used to describe an action or state and forming the main part of the sentence. Now, verb has two main purpose, the action and the state. In order for us to know the actions or state of the verb, we must first know what is actions or maybe what is state of the verb. In verb form, we have action as what I've said a while ago and uh, state verb. Okay, action words or action verbs simply express an action meaning you are doing something for this. You need to move your body or you think, or maybe you are using your energy. Maybe using your brain that is also using your energy. So an action or action words or verbs simply express an action. Is something the subject of the sentence or class, or maybe a price, is doing and includes slipping, sitting, and nothing. So even though there is no movement, we can put that in an action word also. That is very important for us to know the meaning of action word. I have some example here for verb Posters, okay, batting or hitting, you are using your body movement, your energy. Even though walking, walking is very important for us, of course. When you say walking, you are doing an exercise. Maybe you will go from one place to another. You're doing an action. Now, standing. Standing also as an action word or an action verb because standing is uh, showing that you are also doing something even though there is no movement is doing in that case. Hopping, you are uh, is doing an activity. Even catching, you know, catching a ball, even doing a basketball or in a baseball. You are doing your action also. Crawling for a baby or even a man or even a boy can do the crawling, not only a baby, because you're doing action for them. So there are so many words that belong to action word, maybe to an action verb. So you can read here such as reading, sitting, Writing or writing is very much important because you're doing an energy. Nodding, say hello, that is nodding, or you are agreeing with one um, part of the sentence. Or maybe somebody is asking you and you agree with that. Or maybe somebody is telling something regarding the, um, the news and the, uh, you are agreeing, you're nodding meaning is you are uh, agreeing with it. Of course, skipping, leaping, climbing. You cannot say this as climbing. This is a uh, letter B in this word is silent. So meaning you will not going to say that word, 
but the spelling of climbing has the letter, letter B. So you have to say that as climbing, not climbing, it should be climbing. Okay, I'm going to spell this before we go on. Climbing spell as C L I M B I N G. So that is climbing. Spinning, of course, you're turning around. Skating, thinking. As what I've said a while ago, even though there is no movement is doing, so even though you're not using your body movement, like thinking, you are, uh, you are thinking, you are using your mind, that is also a part of action verb, as I've told you a while ago. Um, even though there is no actions being done, that is also a part of action verb. Thinking, and a while ago I'm saying it, of course, and when you are sleeping and dreaming also, so of course, it's a part of an action verb. Sleeping, wrinkling, winking, winking like that. Your 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 eyes is blinking, so winking. So it's hugging. These are the examples of action words. So can you say um, a word that not belongs in here? Okay, that's good. At least the thing. Thinking, yes, I'm, I'm saying thinking, you're doing an action word for that. So again, an action word or action verbs simply express an action. The action is something that subject of the sentence or clause is doing and includes sleep, sleeping, sitting, and napping. So even though there is no movement, as what I've said a while ago, there is still an action. Now, let me give you some examples for action verb. Here, in number one, children are reading the book. Superman is playing this in the sky. The girl is waving her hand. So look at this reading, flying, waving. So these are some examples of an action word. So in number one, children are reading the book. Of course, each one of the each one of them is reading the book. So I use children, these are a plural form for a child, for a boy or for a girl because they are chi. So we're going to use children. Children are reading. Superman is flying. So flying again is an action word. So if a person wanted to fly, even though it's not Superman, even though other hero, even you, if you want to fly, so you're doing an action word. So number two, Superman is flying in the sky. And in number three, the girl is waving her hand. So waving using an action. So that is an action word. So in these examples, you will see that the, you can easily understand the word action verb. Verb, the meaning of a verb is an action word. So that's why in an action verb. So you can easily um, you can easily identify in a sentence uh, which is the action verb, an action word, or which part of the sentence belong to this. So you can easily understand. Let us go on. Now, I've, I've said you a while ago, uh, we already tackled action verb. Now, we were going to discuss the state verb. Again, the state verb is a verb shown the feeling, descriptions, or emotion on situation of the subject. 
subject meaning in this is and being described being discussed in the sentence that is the subject so state verb is the descriptions or filling now um, we can now uh, identify we can now easily understand the meaning or uh, of action verb and state verb because in action verb uh, we are doing something while state verb is the descriptions this is the feeling the emotion of a person the being this um being discussed in a sentence that is the state verb again state verb is a verb shown the feeling descriptions or emotion and situations of the subject okay let me give you some example for state verb he feels happy today. So is the verb read feeling happy, feeling the feels of that person, the feeling of that boy. That is the state verb. Because in this sentence describing what is the boy, um, um, what is the boy is doing, maybe how can you describe the boy? Yeah, this is description. How can you describe the boy? So the boy is happy. He feels happy. That is the description. Feel the signature of the boy. And then in number two, how this, can you describe the picture? Of course, I am a boy. Boy is the description in the picture. So here in this sentence, you can easily understand and you can easily describe what is in the picture is all about. And in um, number three, he is a policeman. Here, you are now describing a man. So, by seeing in, seeing in the picture, the man is wearing a police uniform. So, you cannot say that man is a fireman because the fireman uniform is too different with the policeman. So, in this picture, you cannot say that the the man is a doctor. So, you cannot say that because the picture is not a doctor uniform. So, when you see a picture, you can easily describe the person itself. Even though uh, you will not going to ask other people, but by using your sense of sight, you can easily describe, you can easily um, explain what picture is this all about. So again, in number one, you can say that the, he feels, that is the emotions, he feels happy today because of what he has. Maybe he has, what is that? That is a popsicle. Maybe he really liked the popsicles. So when I get the popsicles, I, I feel very happy. So that is the verb. Of course, if the picture here, in number two is a girl, you cannot say, I am a boy, because if the picture is a girl, so you can easily describe if the word is correct or not. So, I am a boy because of the picture. And in number three, again, he is a policeman. Based on the pictures, based on the uniform that a man is wearing, so you can easy, easily understand that he is a police. So that is a state verb. Again, we will repeat, state verb is a verb shown the feelings, descriptions, or emotion on situation of the subject, while the Action verb or action words or verbs or words. Something the subject of a sentence or class is doing and includes sleeping, sitting, and nothing. So meaning the action word is, uh, you can say now in a simple, simple sentence, action word is a word that you can easily say that is the doing of, of a person. What is the person is doing? Movement. You're moving. 
So in a sentence, when you read, read a sentence that is um, uh, stating like this, woman is climbing. So meaning you can easily understand that he is doing something, climbing. So climbing is an action word, an action verb. While in a picture, if you see a um, boy um, really um, wearing a um, wearing the uniform of a doctor, you can easily say that he is a doctor because of the uniform. Because what you perceive, what you can easily describe, so that is the state of birth. So I think at this uh, in this at this point in time, uh, you can um, you can compare, you can easily um, describe, or you can easily understand the difference between the action verb and the state verb. Now, let's go on. We will go to two main part of the verb. This is the main verb and the auxiliary verb. Okay. The main verb and auxiliary verb, these are the two main parts of the verb. Why? Okay, let us discuss first the meaning of the main verb. As you can see here in our slides, uh, the word is running out here. So it shines or there is a word run, read, stop. This is just only an example of the main verb, but there are a lot of words that can be used for the main verb. So the meaning of main verbs or words that actually show the action or activity of the subject. So as what I've said a while ago, the action is also the main verb in the sentence. That is the main verb in the sentence. A word that can stand alone. There are a lot of words that can you use that can stand alone, meaning when you say that word, um, no need to use for a sentence. And you can easily understand that word. What is the meaning of that word? If I say eat, if I give you a food and I say you eat, meaning you can grab the food and eat it because eat is, is a word that can stand alone. That is a main word. So here we have the read, shines, run, stop. These are a main verb. Okay, let me cite you an example for this. Sun shines. So when you hear the word shine, so you can put the sun there, meaning the sun is shining. So if you remove the sun, and when you see the word shine, meaning you can put other word to that, shine. What can you put instead of sun? You're saying the word shine. The shine meaning is a brighter meaning, uh, is getting, um, get the, the place is getting brighter. We can, you cannot say moon is shining because moon is not a brighter part. Sun is a brighter part of the earth. That, that's why we can use sun shines in this sentence. Bus stop. When you say stop, you can easily understand that the word stop um, can stand alone because stop, um, can you, you can use this uh, word in a person, you can say, uh, please stop moving. Please stop walking. Please stop drinking. So stop, meaning you can uh, easily understand that word 
without using other words in order for you to understand what is the meaning of that word. So he, that word can stand alone. And in number three, car ran. Ran. Oh, you can easily understand ran is, is it a movie? It's a, a, um, an, an action, it's a movement. So even though you're not going to use car here, even though you're going to use other word instead of car, and then put the word run, meaning you can easily understand that word run can, uh, can easily understand in a sentence, even though it's not a complete sentence, it can stand alone. So let me go back again to number one, shines, stop, and run. These are some examples of main verb that can stand alone. If we were to put it in the sentence, number one, sun shines, bus stop, car ran. So these are the examples of main verb. Now, Of course, if there is a main verb, there is also an auxiliary verb. This verb gives more meaning to the main verb. So these words cannot stand alone. So it gives more meaning to the sentence, it gives more meaning to the verbs. But it cannot stand alone. Like example of these auxiliary verbs are is, has, do, did, but there are so many words that you can use for auxiliary verbs. Auxiliary verbs are the helping word to the main verb. Okay, let's go on in this part. Auxiliary verbs help the main verb and also called a helping verb that action happened in the past or is happening in the present or will happen in the future. Again, an auxiliary verb helps the main verb and is also called a helping verb that action happened in the past, meaning that the action or the verb can be happened last time, the past, because yesterday, or happening in the present, that will be today, present, or will happen in the future, tomorrow. So auxiliary verb can be yesterday, past, Today, present, will happen in the future, tomorrow. That's why we have here the past, present, and the future tense. So this auxiliary word can be used in those kind of tenses. Examples. Am is an example of an auxiliary verb. Is this present tense? Are these are an auxiliary verb to help the main verb? Was is past tense where also being is future tense, being be has how had did shall will should, would, may, might, must, can, could. This word is not called because there is an L but should be a silent L. Same with should. It should not be say a should but the word has letter L, but this letter L should be silent in, in that word and you have to say it silently. 
you will not going to say it as should. It should be should. Silent L. Do not say should. You have to say should. But if you're going to write it down, the right spelling for that is should with letter L. Same likewise with would. It's a silent L. Let's go on. Could, silent L. Does. Do not say the West. Should be does. Do not say more well, because some people, maybe some students, they read this as do as. No, it's not do as. It should be does. The word do, need. Out, to. It should be our time. It's not an out. It should be out to. Out to. There. Going to be able to help to had better. Now, these words are examples of auxiliary verbs. Again, an auxiliary verb helps the main verb and is also called a helping verb. That action happened in the past, happened in the past, is happening in the present, will happen in the future. You can see here in the sentence how this is being used. So, after this, we will going to discuss more about the tenses so that you can easily understand of how can you use these words. Now, let me give you some example for this. Example sentences for auxiliary verb. I gave you an example a while ago, the word did. They have did, is, has, do, and uh, am, is, are, how, an example of a silver. Okay. In number one, state here, did they like the film? So the main verb. Um, the auxil auxiliary verb did help the main verb of like. So, without uh, without auxiliary verb, um, you can use it, but it's not in a question form. You can say they like the movie. So, even though there is no auxiliary verb, the sentence can be use without auxiliary verb but normally we use auxiliary verb verb for questioning a person or maybe you are asking a questions of what happening normally we use auxiliary verb in order for us to really understand uh, the sentence if we can say it correctly when i will not if i will not going to use did you're going to read this as like this. They like the film. Because they like the film, there is a main verb. But if you use an auxiliary verb first, the uh, intonation of this, the, the sentence is different. It is in a question form. Did they like the film? If I will remove auxiliary did, the sentence is like this. They like the film. So you will be here on how I am going, on how I'm saying a sentence. Um, if I uh, say it in a question form or in a period, or I'm just telling of what happening, but I'm not asking them what happened to the sentence. So did they like the film? So the answer can be yes, they like the film. Maybe, no, they don't like the film. That will be the answer. In number two, she is, 
Is she coming to the picnic? So there is a question mark, meaning the intonation of the word should be in an in, into question form. There is an auxiliary verb is here, meaning you have to form the sentence into in a question form. But if you're going to remove the auxiliary verb is, the sentence is like this. She coming to the picnic. She come to the picnic. She come to the picnic because coming is not yet being done. But if you remove is, she come to the picnic. You cannot say she coming to the picnic, but she come to the picnic because it's already done. She come to the picnic. She coming to the picnic is a question form. An ing, but if there is an auxiliary verb here, you need to be form it in a, to a question form. Have you seen my pen? Now have you, meaning you are asking the question again. Have you, meaning there is a question form again. Okay, again, I will uh, say it correctly and read it together with auxiliary verb and the question form. Did they like the film? Can you say it? Very good. Again, did they like the, the film? Very good. In number two, is she coming to the picnic? Is she coming to the picnic? Very good. In number three, have you seen my pen? Have you seen my pen? So those are in a question form. We can use this auxiliary verb for a questioning. Now, if there is um, auxiliary verb, there is also a part of the auxiliary verb, which is the modal verb. Modal auxiliary verb is an auxiliary verb that expresses necessity or possibility. The possibility that might can be happened, the possibility that is an auxiliary verb that expresses necessity or possibility. We have an example here. Will, example for modal auxiliary verb, will, shall, may, can, could. I told you it's say could, not call, it should be could. Might, must. These words express the possibility to happen. The, what might be happen to the, to the sentence that is the modal auxiliary verb. So when you see these examples like will, shall, may, can, could, might, met, and others. So meaning in a sentence, there is a modal auxiliary verb that is being used. Example of the sentences that using modal auxiliary verb. Bus may stop. So bus is the subject, main verb stop. So modal auxiliary verb is may. Even though you're not using the word may, if you're going to remove it, and then the word will be bus stop, meaning the bus will stop automatically in this place. But if you say bus may stop, so you may not understand if the bus will stop or not. May the possibility of the bus um, that will stop in this area. So there is no 100% that the bus will stop because it may happen. Maybe the bus will um, go to the other place, will not go to this place. So the bus may stop. So you can put here, the bus may stop here. 
because you didn't know if that that's the dash will stop or not. So that is the modal accelerator verb. They must eat. They must eat because you are saying that you have to eat now. They must eat. But even though you're going to, if you're not going to use must, if you remove the modal auxiliary verb must, they eat. So meaning the word you can, you can ask easily understand that they eat the food. Of course, they eat their lunch. They eat their breakfast. So you easily understand they already eat. But if you say they must eat, you are um, saying not the possibility, but you are giving them a command that they have to eat the food. If you're not going, if they will not going to eat the food, you might be get angry to them. So modal auxiliary verb is also a helping verb. So even though you're not going to use um, this verb, the sentence is uh, the sentence can stand alone. But if you are not sure with your sentence. You have to put the modal auxiliary verb, so that the verb, uh, um, so that the verb can also understand, it can easily understand by the reader or maybe by the, the the listener. Okay. Before I end up these lessons, we will going to do a recap. We've learned in this video is all about an action. Verb, state verb, main verb, and auxiliary verb. And in auxiliary verb, there is also a modal verb. Again, what is the meaning of action verb? Very good. You're doing an action for that. How about state verb? Nice. State verb is when you're describing a person or a thing or maybe giving an, and you can say any feelings or emotions that is a state of verb. How about main verb? Main verb can be auxiliary verb. Do you think if there is no auxiliary verb, the main verb can stand alone? Yes, a main verb can stand alone even though there is no auxiliary verb. But auxiliary verb, if you want to prolong, to have a prolong, to prolong to make a sentence, you can use the auxiliary verb. So they can help each other. This word, this verb are helping each other in a sentence. Okay? Now, um, I hope that you get some information and you learn something with this video. And if you like this, just click the button, the bell, and of course, you have to click the likes and you have to share it to your friend. Most especially, you need to subscribe this because I have a lot of educational tools for you waiting for the other people to understand more about the English. Um, do not be afraid of staying or stating or understanding a word or a sentence because by learning, you will get more and your brain will work together with your eyes, with your ears. And of course, your brain will make uh, more, uh, um, what is this? Uh, your brain will move more. Your brain will have uh, a possibility to, to gain a lot of knowledge if you will uh, really, if you are really wanted to learn a lot of things. Okay, for that, thank you so much. Goodbye for now.